Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome. Uh, it's a treat to be here um, all together today uh, to hear the uh, Dvorak Piano Quintet. And before we dive into the piece itself, uh, I have with me Jane Vile Jaffe. Hi. Hi, James. Uh, she is a program annotator and essayist um, and consultant for many symphony orchestras and festivals and music presenters. She's written for the Aspen Music Festival for 29 years, um, the Manhattan School of Music, Great Mountains Music Festival. So uh, it's, it, it would be a real treat to have her today under any circumstances, but uh, even if she wasn't my mom, who she also is. Uh, so thank, just thank you for being here. Well, it's a pleasure. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit um, just to sort of set the stage for folks listening about the Dvorak Piano Quintet. Uh, do you want to give us just a quick overview of Dvorak himself? Dvorak was a Czech composer, one of the most famous, and he lived in the 19th century. He was especially proud of his Czech uh, heritage, and he still, though, studied all the Germanic forms, and he was helped early in his career by Brahms, who uh, heard some of his music uh, from a contest, I think, and was so impressed that he helped Dvorak get his works published with his own publisher. So it was nice to get that kind of a, a boost between composers. Uh, and this piece, the piano quintet, was written when Dvorak was uh, living at a country place in the Czech forest. I forgot how you pronounce it. Um, but he was very, very happy at this time in his life. He had a wonderful family and I think four kids and his wife, and he just was very happy. And I know it's dangerous to say happiness in your life translate into happiness in your music, but it really seems like this is a happy piece. Oh, I like thinking about that too, about how these, you know, famous composers, um, didn't exist in their own creative silos, but they knew each other and like had an influence too. Do you want to walk us through a little bit, uh, you know, what's going on in the in the piece itself? And, um, you know, if you don't mind, sure. it, it would be great if you could touch on this sort of uh, theme of like his sort of Czech nationalism and folk music tendencies, but then how that how that kind of also plays within the context of this Germanic, you know, Austrian Germanic musical tradition that had, that had been um, uh, going on. Well, Dvorak was very proud, as I said, of his Czech heritage. And he, even at one point, got furious with the publisher who wanted his name to be spelled, his first name to be Anton, and he wanted to be Antonine because that's the Czech version. Uh, but in any case, the, Czech elements that he specifically loved were things that show up in folk songs and folk dances. And mm. so it, a lot of the things that he wrote have a, a feeling of folk like music, melody or harmony, but he lots of times made them original. He just used the same kind of intervals and uh, melodic lines and rhythmic patterns that he found in folk music. And so sometimes it's hard to tell what's original and what's uh, an actual quote. Um, so he also really liked certain of the forms of the dances. And one of the typical things that happens in a Czech folk song or a folk dance, and often the two are the same, you dance to a folk song, um, the alternation of slow and fast sections. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that with some of the movements. It happens throughout this piece, but also throughout all of his works. So. Oh, oh, and cool. so about the German tradition, that's how he studied, you know, when he when he was a student, he learned all the major forms, you know, sonata forms, scherzo, rondo, you know, all the things that one learns, plus harmonic progressions, all that kind of stuff. And so he has a real melding of his uh, Czech ideas and his, uh, German learning. Oh, that's great. Okay, great. So um, I think you mentioned uh, sonata form already. So uh, where do we hear that? Um, so both the first and last movements here are in sonata form. And uh -huh. sonata form just 
it, you know, in case you're not familiar, it has an exposition of themes, then you go around developing the themes in other keys, and then you come back, you recap them in, an, in a, a third section. And sometimes you add a little something at the end of CODA. Oh, perfect. Okay, so now we have our bookends. We have our first and last movement. What's going on um, here in the middle of the piece? I, I heard you say uh, the words Dumka and Furiant. Well, Dvorak said that you can't exactly define the word Dumka, but it really is a kind of mournful lament. But he also said that if you're going to have a lament, you need to have something joyful and exuberant afterwards to make the full contrast right. apparent. So that's everywhere here. And this movement, which he calls a dumka, has that beautiful, soulful, slow lament quality. But he also has you know, the joy that we're talking about and the contrast that we're talking about that he loves in all the Czech folk songs. Yeah, this came up first in rehearsal. I think we're... Um sort of used the image of like a funeral plus a wake. So we had people coming up to the lectern and envisioning those characters as instruments sort of telling different versions of the same story about the person who's passed and then, and then following that with these, these like releasing energy dances. Um, That's great. a nice and, analogy, yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks. Um, yeah, and then what's, and then, so that's our, that's our second movement is the, is the Dumka form. And um, how about the how about the third this um, scherzo in the form of a furion? A furion, a furion. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but is a <laughs> very fast uh, Czech dance. And so the exuberance of this uh, opening music it'll just lift you out of your seats, and it's uh, the kind of thing that fits in perfectly with a scherzo because a scherzo is a Germanic form, but it also is supposed to be light and happy and, and you know, literally a joke, although this isn't a joke, but it's just uh, bubbly and, and joyous. But we're still having our Czech element here. First of all, that a furion is a folk dance, but also the alternations of fast and slow. And I, uh, went down a real rabbit hole with this movement because I read from a Dvorak scholar that he had that somebody else had told him that Dvorak associated this movement with a Czech folk song called Gdish i Sete Sedlačku Ban, which wow. means if you are a farmer, a lord, and I might have butchered that, but I got my nephew who's in the Czech Republic right now to pronounce it for me. But anyway, I gave it a try. Uh, but the song is, is funny. If you read all the verses, it, it's about uh, this gentleman farmer. And the next line goes on to say something about if you're if you are a gentleman farmer, cut your own meat. And so <laughs> and it goes on from there. Even so if I'm you butchered it, it would be on theme. <laughs> And I don't know what you dance to when you're talking about that, but anyway, it's <laughs> a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, wow. So J James, maybe you can show how that folk song comes into the movement. Oh yeah, it comes in as a viola thing. Um, uh, it's where, um, uh, uh, I happen to have a cello, who knew? Um, but uh, yeah, so um, the, the viola plays, and this is what was based on the folk song. Nice. And I'm, I'm, I'm. Thank you for introducing me to this song, and uh, because I, I think it's really nice thinking about where where things come from uh, in terms of like these classical masterpieces having roots in in. Um, in uh, folk music. I, I should say that. Oh, go ahead. I, I just want to say that Dvorak, uh, it's really his own melody. It's not like he's quoting the folk song. You, has to, you have to just kind of think, oh, that was in his mind. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I think, um, you know, as we, as we move to wrap up our, our, our chat, um, what sort of 
for you the first time kind of captured your interest in, in the piece? What, what holds it now? Um, I love the piece. Everybody loves the piece. It's just, you, you keep hearing its melodies in your head and you go around singing them and you feel like dancing. And that's, I think, part of what uh, Dvorak had in mind. So I, I like, especially, you know, a lot of them just lift and it's, it's really, mm. really great. So James, what, what grabs you about this piece? Oh, uh, well, that's a good question. I, you know, I, um, I think this may have been the piece that got me into chamber music. Uh, when Ooh. I, uh, you might remember, I went off to chamber music camp, you know, when I was like, uh, uh, in eighth grade or something and uh, this was the the first movement of this piece was assigned and it was a good group and I uh, it was the group that got assigned to sort of close out we we're the ending group of the whole concert so I think I think playing this and then getting a big reaction from the audience I think um, that's part of what got my interest and kept my interest in this piece is that it was beautiful for us to play and we loved diving into it um, and it translated you know we, we would play it and and it and it, uh, it was clearly connecting with people. So I guess, you know, um, yeah, that's what I would say. I would say, uh, yeah. hopefully we get some of the same experience today with you with you all uh, listening. Oh, to. well, you all played so well. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing it again. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, thanks again for, for being here. And sure. Um, yeah. Thanks, we'll, we'll, thanks um, for inviting me. <laughs> hopefully do more of these at some point, but uh, till then be well. You too.
Thank you.